the clown becomes a sideshow attraction. Here's your look at the sideshow collectibles. This is the Joker six scale figure. Make way for the Clown Prince of Crime, Sideshow is proud to present the Joker six scale figure, joining the universe of Sideshow's DC Comics collectibles. In this video review, we're also going to be having a look at the Sideshow exclusive that's going to come with the exclusive head laughing portrait of the Joker. Well, it seems like the best place to start this review is the same place where we always start these reviews, and that's figuring out how tall these figures stand. It's a service I like to provide so that if you guys are looking to pick up this one for yourself, you know exactly how tall he stands. Although, to be fair, if he's a six scale figure, on average, these guys sit at around 12 inches. The Joker being no exception. The figure of the six scale figure release of the Clown Prince of C Crime, Crime, stands 11.9 inches in height. And then in centimeters, let's go ahead and flip that over right now. Flip the switch to centimeter town. You're looking at the figure standing 30.2 centimeters tall. Now, nine times out of ten, Sideshow Collectibles do include display stands with their figures. There are the off exceptions to the rule that unfortunately don't get them, but I can pleasantly tell you that the Joker does come included with one. And let's have a look at that right now. One of the calling cards for Sideshow is the fact that they usually include these hexagonal shaped stands. And Joker gets one as well. The one thing that is different, and of course can be signed off as being Joker's versus someone else's, is the fact that he's kind of got this big top print that's located on the top. It looks like the print you would expect to find at maybe an abandoned carnival, a perfect place for perhaps the Joker, as it does certainly have a lot of age and wear and tear. I can assure you it is brand new. It's been printed along the top. And again, I love the alternating colors of the red and the cream. I uh, would have liked actually if the points were wider as opposed to being very thin and slender. I wonder if they tried to avoid the idea of having wider bands of color so that it didn't happen to look like a video game company, an umbrella company perhaps. That's my only guess. Uh, other than that, though, I'm really happy with the display stand. As simplistic as it is, and really only relying on the print on the top, it's enough to at least make you feel, it certainly makes me feel, that I'm looking at something that would belong to Joker, as opposed to just being a completely black surfaced base. Uh, a rather familiar sight as well is the supporting cradle that's going to support Joker's legs. You can put that on top of it, and uh, again... I mean, not, not a bad looking stand. It doesn't have a placard or anything like that on the front marking it's the Joker. But at the very least, looking at the top of it, you could imagine this could be something that Joker would actually have. Normally, we would start the review with having a look at a gander, if you will, at all the accessories and trinkets that come included with the figure. A talking point I uh, suppose I want to talk about first is more so the head sculpt. So I think we're going to look at the figure first, mark it down, 
put it in your agenda book that we're going to look at the accessories just a tad bit later because I do definitely want to talk about this first and foremost as I feel like I will potentially forget about this. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, what I want to talk about, there's a very slim chance I'm going to forget about what I want to talk about. And that is Joker's head sculpt. Joker has one of two head sculpts, if you're lucky enough to pick the exclusive up for yourself. I can't sway you necessarily, but let me just tell you, wholeheartedly, honestly, if I can, get the exclusive if you're looking to pick up this one for yourself. You'll thank me in a bit. The head sculpt, the defaulted head sculpt that comes included with the Joker isn't terrible, don't get me wrong. It's not a bad head sculpt, but I feel like it's off. There's something about it I don't care for, and I don't know what it is. It could be the fact that his face, perhaps his chin isn't elongated, isn't stretched enough. And of course, this opinion can change from person to person. That's the beauty of collecting and the collecting world, is the fact that we're all going to have kind of things that we like and specifically look for as being... Whatever it may be, you could be the definitive Joker. Close your eyes for a second and picture, if you will, what you think would be the perfect look of Joker. I specifically would pick, her, pick the Norm Brayfogle look of Joker from the early 90s. That's my definitive looking Joker. So based on that, and based on looking at this now, it's not a terrible head sculpt, don't get me wrong, but I honestly like the exclusive much, much better. For its positive, I mean, obviously, there's going to be positives and negatives to all the things about it. For a positive standpoint, like, it's certainly a sinister-looking Joker. Uh, the paint is actually really fantastic on this release, as they've airbrushed all these little pockets, really bringing out the details to the wrinkles. The airbrushing around the eyes is also a very nice, welcomed treat. But again, I don't know what it is specifically about this head, head sculpt that it's losing me. Now, obviously, I picked up this one specifically with the intent of displaying him likely with the exclusive head sculpt because I thought of the two, the head sculpt for the exclusive looked far better. It's surprising, though, how different that head sculpt ends up being when you look at them side by side. I know I'm talking a lot about this alternate head portrait. Don't worry, we'll talk about that in a second. We'll, I'll bring it in. But just to give you a close-up detailing, show you guys the hair sculpt. That hair is actually really quite nice. It's on a very bright green, a smart move made by Sideshow Collectibles. They've muted the green, but still it's very much Joker colors. Of course, his eyebrows are also done in green. There it is right there. Really, again, liking the face. Maybe from here, I like it. There's something about the mouth that's maybe throwing me off. I know, realistically, they would obviously want to go with Joker having more real-world traits. Maybe if they had found a way to elongate his mouth, but I know that would make him look less realistic. But maybe that's the thing that's throwing me off on this particular head portrait. Some people have commented that perhaps J Joker's neck is a little too short. And I don't think it's necessarily the fact that Joker's head is too short. Because if you bring down the shoulder pads for his jacket... And then you bring down, like, the collar. His neck seems a suitable length. I think it's just for the fact that if you add all the additional bulk and mass of his jacket, that's really what's giving Joker almost the look like he's missing a neck, when we know that's not really the case. Uh, of his outfit, he kind of has very much like a Cesar Romero Joker design to it, certainly from the color scheme, what I'm looking at here. The more pink-colored purple jacket is very much something I would expect to find with the classic, uh, the old classic Batman series Joker. Very much I'm feeling that when I'm looking at this. The fabric, unfortunately, that they decided to go with is very prone to wrinkling, just for the very limited amount of time they've been trying to pose and display this for the opener of this review. I've already noticed some real considerable wrinkling forming on his jacket. I can't imagine Joker's really a stickler for tailoring that he expects his jackets to always be pressed and wrinkle-free, but certainly the fabric that they ended up using for this particular costume is really very prone to wrinkling. I mean, again, just for the, the few times, the handful of times I've been really stressing the fabric by bending the arms and manipulating it just to display some of the accessories he comes included with, he very much has developed a whole bunch of wrinkles on his jacket. That may not be a deal breaker necessarily, but it's something, of course, I want to mention to you guys. On the inside of the jacket, he's got a nice paisley print. I do like that. 
I feel jarred by the fact he doesn't have a tailed coat jacket. He sort of has just a regular jacket. And I guess that doesn't have to be every Joker across the board. Again, it's the idea of closing your eyes and picturing what you picture the Clown Prince of Crime to actually look like. I just kind of picture my Joker having a longer tail jacket. But this one does have a split up the back. And a nice little added actually detail is the fact that they do have the adjusted strap on the back of his yellowish-orange vest. I really, again, like the, the additional work that they put into putting the paisley print on the interior lining of the jacket. That's really a nice touch. Uh, he does have what seems to be, and I did check a bit, he does, does seem to have uh, like metal, I don't know if it is actually metal, but he does have these buttons on the sides. He's got three on the one side, and he's got buttons all running down the center. You could undo the, the fastened pegs if you want to connect the fasteners together, if you want to undo the vest. I really don't know why you would necessarily want to. And he's got a lo lot of buttons a whole lot of buttons running up the center section of his black shirt. The colors here may not necessarily read Cesar Romero Joker, but like the overall stepping away from it and looking at it from a distance, very much I'm getting Cesar Romero's Joker, even though like his shirt would have been an alternate color. I feel almost like he might have too many buttons. There I go, perhaps being too much a stickler for detail, but if you looked at this and increased the size of the figure to a one-to-one -one scale, or at the very least, if you scaled up the shirt to be a one-to-one -one scale, you don't think that you would have that many buttons. I certainly don't think I'd have that many buttons on my shirt. I would probably have taken out the alternating ones. Maybe take out this one right here, take out this one right here. I think having this seems like it has too many buttons for my liking. He's got his little lapel flower. Don't get too close. It's probably going to squirt some acid at you. And then continuing our way down, he's got the tailored pants a little on the wrinkly side. And he also has little spats on top of his feet. The spats are kind of a more pearl color than they are white. I think I would have liked them a little bit more on the white side so that they don't have as much the silver sheen to them. And a nice touch is the fact that they actually painted the undersoles of his shoes to actually be yellow, as opposed to just sticking to the same purple that's on the tops of his shoes here. Obviously, I've yammered on long enough. We were talking, of course, just not too long ago about the exclusive head sculpt, and we'll bring that in right now. It's jarring the fact that the head sculpts seem like they're not even the exact same face. Obviously, the exaggerated features on the exclusive version does distort Joker's portrait, but it doesn't seem like it's the same head sculpt. The noses are, they seem like they're a little bit different. This one seems to have a more pointed nose. If you really want to ask me, if anybody is asking me, I really think this is the superior head sculpt. I would have even said they could have used this as the defaulted head sculpt, and given this is the Sideshow exclusive, but obviously from a business standpoint, it makes much more sense to maybe offer up this being the exclusive, so obviously people are going to want to pick up the, the one that has the extra head portrait. Of the two, again, I prefer this one. Not only is the hair looking a little bit more outrageous and something more akin to Joker, but I love the fact he's got a laughing smile. This Joker, again, something throws me off on the head portrait. While this one almost feels like a Joker you would expect to find in a video game, where you know it's Joker, but it's not quite Joker. Kind of like the Mortal Kombat Joker. It's Joker, but it's not quite Joker. This one actually feels like something you would expect to find on a Joker statue. I mean, the detailing on it is fantastic. The likeness and expression on this just... It, it definitely gives you a much more personality-filled face for the Clown Prince of Crime. One thing I do want to draw your attention to as well is the fact that the eyes are actually painted in green. I kid you not, those eyes are actually painted in green. They have a nice little reflection to them, and they're slightly discolored as well. They're not the brightest of white eyes. It's a really nice-looking head sculpt. Both of them, again, good, but I much more prefer this one over the defaulted one that comes included with the figure. Further to my talking point, once again, we'll bring in the defaulted head. Personally, again, there's nothing really wrong with this one. I just like this one a lot more. You guys can let me know down below in the comments section which head sculpt you prefer. I'm so, so very glad. I almost feel like if this head sculpt wasn't available, and I only got this head sculpt, 
I would actually feel disappointed with the figure. Now that I can switch it out to this, I think this is honestly going to be my go-to for displaying this particular rendition of the Joker. I mean, look at the expression on that. That is fantastic. The paintwork also adds to the creepiness of the Joker, being that it's not completely white. You can see it's almost like more of an off color of gray that's been added to the pigment of Joker's face. It really does lend itself to making it look like Joker's got some discoloration actually happening in his face. Again, unfortunately, the downside to having the jacket so poofy, I mean, maybe again, you can bring the shoulder pads down a little bit. I'm going to see if maybe I can just, I don't know if I would take out, there's some additional padding that's in the jacket. Maybe if you took out a little bit of the padding, you could kind of remedy the fact that Joker's neck doesn't look like it exists. Again, if you could just bring the shoulder pads down a little bit. I mean, you can certainly cannot bring the head up any more than it is. Maybe try to bring the collar down a little bit. That is one little nitpick, is it does definitely feel like Joker, looking specifically, at least even at a distance, it does definitely feel like Joker is without a neck. What a stellar head sculpt, though. Definitely so happy that I picked up the exclusive. This one, I think, would have been a deal breaker for me. And in fact, if they had swapped these around, whereas this was the defaulted head sculpt, and this one here would have been the Sideshow exclusive, I would have just been content and happy, I think, to pick up the regular release and not get the one that has the alternate head sculpt. It just so happens with the way that things were, they flipped it around, well, flipped it around this way, and that this was the defaulted head sculpt, which again was okay, and this is the far superior head sculpt, if you ask me, with the Sideshow exclusive. Running through Joker's accessories, he comes with pretty much everything you would imagine Joker to come with, short of maybe perhaps the Laughing Fish. He does come with, for example, the revolver, and it doesn't actually seem like the chamber does spin. I have seen a few videos of this where this revolver, the actual barrel of the revolver has broken off. Knock on wood, I haven't had that issue just yet. It's got some really nice paintwork done in the silver, with the handle done in all black. Uh, along with this, of course, Joker's going to be always playing pranks, and the revolver does have a couple of flags. Let me just go ahead and grab those right now. They all fit the exact same way in. Just got to be careful, though, because it doesn't give you a whole lot of clearance. In fact, I would think just hold the very end of the revolver like this and just put that in, but it does not give you much space to work with. One of the flags is click, 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 which happens to alternate that on the other side there as well. I think the more preferred choice, at least for me as well, is the fact that it does have the bang and bang on both sides. Again, if you look at the barrel and you look at what actually has to fit in the barrel, there is very little clearance. So you would want to hold it on the end. Don't hold it down here and try pushing it in. That's perhaps where some of the breaking, I think, has resulted. Just pop that in place. Popping is probably not the best word to be using to describe that. And you've got Joker with his bang flag. A really nice touch. Joker also comes included with his cane, all done here in black plastic with silver done on the bottom as well as silver done on the top. The cane seems short. I guess for a cane, cane should be about the same length as the leg, maybe just a little bit shorter, so I guess it's not necessarily that short. But I feel like posing it, I would probably have to have the figure leaning over as if, you know, he's kind of leaning on the cane. Or again, you can kind of just display it in his hand. He also includes a stabby, stabby knife. Uh, this is a fold-in bladed knife out of which you can actually fold in. It's not something that's going to retract. If anything, if you push on it, it's only going to break it. It's done in black plastic with the blade actually done in silver. And it looks like they've also put the rivet points there also. Now, the way that this is, it looks like the little button activation point would be right here. And then again, the blade would just flip out. And, uh, you know, again, Joker would be able to do some stabby stabby with that. It's small. I don't feel like it's as fragile, but again, you just want to be careful of the plastic for the blade. But overall, I'm just really happy that they would include a knife or something like that. Speaking of, or something like that, Joker also comes included with a crowbar. I would hope that Jason Todd is nowhere to be found in case Joker decides he wants to go swinging. 
Uh, it's done in a two-tone effect. The it looks like the primary color of the plastic is this dark gunmetal gray, but on either side, the claw, I don't know if these uh, are the claw and the little curved part of the uh, crowbar is done in almost a more airbrushed, lighter cream color. It's a really, again, nice effect. It's all done in plastic, so again, be very careful of that. And again, it fits into Joker's hands. We'll talk about his hands in a second. Just before we have a look at his hands, though, the last accessory to come include with the Joker is a playing card. It's done in just a cardboard, nothing fancy, but uh, certainly the print is nice. I do like the look of that. It so happens also to be the exact same print that's on the front of the box. Now everybody's going to pause and rewind to the beginning of the video. You can do that later or just wait for final looks because the front of the box is there. You just have to remember what the card looks like. The card does fit into his hand. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. It's not the most secure hold, certainly, but at the very least, he comes included with only one. Don't lose this, because he only comes with one. So, let's talk about those hands. What's with the lack of enthusiasm, I'm sure asks members of the mob? Well, I gotta tell you, Joker's hands are a bit frustrating. Not specifically why they're Joker's hands. I mean, they could be anybody's hands, but let's, well, we'll talk about those right now. Of the hands, he comes with a variety of them. We'll go ahead and look at those individually. He comes with a pair of relaxed palms. I mean, again, if you want to just have him in a relaxed museum stance, or if you want to have him pretending to lend out a hand, he comes with a pair of flat palms, one of which is broken. And I have to take full fault for that. I did break these off. Not deliberately, I didn't have any mean streak in me where I want to take out my aggressions on the hand pegs. They just unfortunately broke off. Each one of these hands do come with their own supplied peg, which is fine and good because you may need extras of these. Why I had such frustrations is the fact that the hands, the sockets at least, this peg goes into the forearms. I'm sure I'm not introducing anything new to the table. You guys already know that. Unfortunately, though, the peg, initially part of the sockets, were so tight that when I tried to wiggle the hand off, the hand pull pulled out and the peg stayed behind. It's easy enough. You could easily put the hand back in and try your luck at it again. Or if you had a pair of small pliers, you could kind of finesse and wiggle those back out. What well, ended up happening, though, is as I was wiggling out the peg, I ended up breaking the end of the peg right off. Uh, it, it was just unfortunate because, like I said, I pulled the hand out, and then the peg, unfortunately, broke right off. And then I had to fish, or it really didn't even have to fish, I had to kind of lure out the peg that was in the socket of the forearm before I could put in something else. Now, this has happened a couple of times. I already have a couple of pegs that have broken off because the sockets were so tight that it made next to impossible at trying to remove the hands without running the risk of these breaking off. Or the other thing ended up happening was the peg rate remained behind. And like I said, I tried to fish it out only to have the peg break right off. And luckily, I was still able to get the peg out of the sockets so I could replace it with another hand. The downside to that is now I'm going to have to try to get some tweezers or a screwdriver and try to fish that out. Oh, it's just such a shame. I probably will not ultimately use this hand anyways, but I've got a couple of lucky ones, for example, where the pegs have come out. So I just have to really find another peg, put it in there, stick it back in the arms. I think once I've got all the arms out the first time, that initial pulling of these arms out, I think I've relaxed the socket well enough that all the additional hands I'm putting in now shouldn't give me any other issues. So let's knock on wood for that. Anyways, the other uh, hands he comes included with is a bunch of gestured hands. I like this one. He's got fingers crossed. That's a nice little touch. And he also has a pointing hand. Along to go with that, Joker also has a pair of closed fists, which happens to be still in the socket section right there. And he also has a couple of grabbing or gripping hands, suited for holding like the crowbar, suitable for holding like the pistol, for example. If you want something that where it's actually on the trigger finger, at least actually on the trigger of the, the revolver, we can go ahead. I'm just going to pull this out so I don't accidentally lose it. There we go. And you can just fit the revolver into the into the hand. Just be careful that you don't put too much pressure on the barrel. 
contact that could potentially break. And you've got yourself a pistol holding hand, specifically the one with the trigger finger. Uh, then he also has, uh, he's got another hand for holding like the cane, for example, if you wanted to feed the cane through his hand, just like so. This one's nice because it actually rests the thumb against the cane, so it gives you a nice secure fit. The cane's not going to go anywhere. Another hand he does come included with, and this one is kind of neat, is a joy buzzer. At least I think it's a joy buzzer. Uh, even in the tray of getting the hands out, this specific hand is labeled sharp. And I definitely would agree, it's very sharp. I guess it's supposed to be more a prick, a poison, like a poison prick, than it's supposed to be a joy buzzer. Because I don't think a joy buzzer is supposed to look specifically like this. If this isn't a joy buzzer, I would have been happier, I think, if given a joy buzzer than something that's got a prick to it. Because I really don't think, like, for me, Joker, I picture him more the practical Joker. Sure, that's pulling a prank and all, but if it's just something that's a prick and not necessarily something that's going to shock them, I think I really much would have preferred getting a joy buzzer instead. Oh, 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 before I forget, the one other hand that he comes included with, which involved me having to remove it from the socket of his arm, is the playing card hand. We're going to go ahead and take the playing card. I just want to show you how it attaches. I would have thought it would have gone in between his pointer finger and his thumb, but there's just too much clearance. It doesn't sit as well as I had hoped. You actually have to move the playing card closer to the inside of the hand. I wouldn't risk necessarily doing the blizzard test onto my floor that may claim it, but it does hold the card in place. I would again thought that the playing card would have been best suited just on the actual tips of his finger and his pointer, or at least on his thumb and his pointer, but it turns out in actual fact that he holds the card a little closer to his palm instead. Looking at the figure's articulation, his head is on a ball joint, but it does one better. He's got a ball joint right here, serving as obviously the necessary means to move his head quite freely around. But then Joker's also got a secondary ball joint at the base of the neck. Again, it's just such a shame that the torso sits so far up that from first glance, it definitely does look like he's missing a neck altogether. But I can assure you he's got a secondary ball joint right at the base of the neck. Joker also has an ab crunch, which moves up and down, and you can move the waist side to side. His arms hinge outward, and it's only when you really move his arms at a 90 degree angle do you really see all the additional padding that they put in his shoulders. This really can wreak havoc for Joker having the illusion that he's got no neck whatsoever. He does have what seems also to be having a shoulder hinge. In other words, you can move the arms forward and back, but they also seem like, like I said, it seems as if they can move them a little bit more further forward if you want to have Joker, for example, shooting off his gun. The arms also allow the, if you saw at the beginning of this review, we had the arm actually quite high up in order to look like he's swinging down with his crowbar. And that's something that you can pull off with this figure. There's actually a fair bit of movement happening in Joker's shoulders. You just want to uh, compensate for the fact of, as you are moving the arms, these the little pillows there on the tops of his jacket do seem to want to kind of get bunched up around the joint. He does have a swivel in his bicep. I gotta have to go retrieve his hand there. And he does have what seems only to be a single hinge in his elbow. The hands, depending on whatever hands you end up going with, there you go. Uh, the hands do swivel back and forth. And again, going back to the big problem I have with this particular figure is the fact that the pegs don't sit well enough in the holes. You apply enough pressure, and eventually you can get those hands back in place. But the peg on the other side right here is the initial peg of getting it out of the socket is impossible. And uh, you may find yourself in the same similar predicament that I was where I broke that first peg, trying to get it removed out from the socket here. Joker's legs, I have to admit, I'm a bit disappointed with. Yeah, it just has the standard articulation as all the other six scale figures from Sideshow Collectibles. But I did notice right out of the gate, getting this guy out of the tray, his legs were already quite loose. Not loose to the sense that they're going to be you know, moving back and forth if I shake the figure. The legs aren't going to be necessarily flopping around. But this is the sort of loose legs that you start having with your figures if you've had them in your collection for a while and not, init not initially getting them out of packaging, which I've already started to experience with Joker here. He does have a swivel on the top cuts of his thigh, 
And again, those just feel really loose on their own. He's got loose knees. This one knee is actually surprisingly tight. This one here is a little on the looser side. And he also has articulation in the feet. He also has an ankle pivot, which is good and all. But I do really worry about the stability of this figure long term. The figure has some really good elements to him. And the last thing I really would want to have to start facing with is the idea that he's already got loose legs. Obviously, he can make use of his display stand, which isn't going to be the issue there. But out of the box, immediately getting it, you really shouldn't have to be experiencing really loose joints. And I feel like I might already be having that with Joker, and I've had him only for a few couple of days. So really a lot of good stuff coming from the new Joker and Sideshow collectibles. We really don't have a lot of comic themed Jokers. We know Hot Toys of course have covered the gambit, running the gambit with the various movie incarnations of the Joker giving us Jack Nicholson Jokers, two of those, a handful, a bevy if you will, of Heath Ledger Jokers, and a couple of, dare I say, Jared Leto Jokers, which I know is not the popular opinion for what a Joker should be in film. Maybe we eventually will see ourselves a Joaquin Phoenix Joker, but that's for another discussion. The discussion here, obviously, is comic-themed Jokers. Sideshow Collectibles did churn out one not too long ago, a good decade or so ago. And I did do a review of that one, and a re-review of that one, so if you haven't checked that one out, feel free to get a gander, if you will, at those videos. But we're talking about this new release, Joker. For all intensive purposes, a vast upgrade to the other Joker that we had gotten included. The other one did have an alternate head portrait with the fedora, and it also came with a jacket. This one doesn't have that. But I'm really getting the vibes of a Cesar Romero Joker here with the colors of the costume. The green, of course, is omitted in his shirt, but for the most part, I'm getting the same sort of colors, which reminds me, again, we're not getting ourselves a Cesar Romero Joker, and that kind of makes me sad. But going back to this one, this one does have a lot of good elements to it. Uh, the head po portraits are something of debate. I feel so polarized with the extreme feelings that I get with both head sculpts. I really love this one. This is my go-to head sculpt, I think, of the two. The other one is just okay. Now, that's my opinion. Your opinion may drastically di uh, differ from that, and that's perfectly fine as well. But I feel like the other Joker head sculpt comes up a little bit short. If that was solely the head sculpt that was available for this particular release, and there was no other exclusive head sculpt available, I probably would honestly pass. And that's just me. The alternate head sculpt, the exclusive head sculpt that currently is on the socket of his shoulders here in Final Looks, is for me the best head sculpt of the two. It's so very different when you look at the two side by side. This Joker, with that head sculpt, I feel like I'm actually looking at a premium format figure, or like one of those statue Jokers, because that's the kind of head sculpt that you generally get there. With the regular six scale releases, it's not a head sculpt that you normally get. So a very welcome treat it was to get this one included. The other head sculpt for Joker has all the checked boxes, I think, for what a Joker head sculpt should be. The really narrow, long chin the pointed nose, the elongated eyebrows, and the big devilish smile, but there's something missing about it, and I don't know what it is. It's enough that, like I said, if it was the only head sculpt available for that figure, I would have ultimately just passed altogether. Getting the alternate head sculpt, the one that we have here in Final Looks, is going to be the definitive, the end-all, no talking me out of it. This is going to be the way I'm going to display the figure, not necessarily with his cane in his hand. Maybe I might end up switching that out for the crowbar, just going to make sure that Jason Todd is nowhere to be found. But really, this is going to be the Joker that I'm going to put on display. I really like the elements of it. He is a bit of a fickled bunch when it comes to changing out the hands. Just be very careful when you take the hands out of the sockets the first go around. You're probably going to have no problem whatsoever. But I had problems taking the hands out of the sockets, and it resulted in me breaking off two pegs. The sockets, I don't know, just don't want to let go of those pegs, or the pegs were really, really tightly put in there. But they were really a bit of a hassle to try to get them out of the sockets in the first place, and it resulted in me breaking off the pegs. Thank goodness that all the hands do come with their own supplied pegs, so at least that is good. But I never like breaking anything on a figure, and I couldn't feel like I was honestly giving a review without mentioning that I did break off those pegs. Again, it might just only be me. You may not even have that problem whatsoever. Overall, really happy with, Joke with Joker. I'm disappointed that his legs are a bit loose already, but I guess if I keep him on the display stand, it shouldn't be too much the issue. I'm just happy with the fact that I got the exclusive version, because that, that is one fine-looking Joker. 
If you managed to pick up this one for yourself, let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of it. Did you get the exclusive? Uh, if you didn't, let me know down, down below in the comments section. Or really, if you haven't picked it up, the figure just yet, based on this review and this review alone, let me know what you guys think of, two, of the two head portraits. I always like reading your comments down below. I would, by the way, recommend this figure, but this would be an example where I would recommend getting the exclusive if the only the only available option available is to get the regular version that doesn't have the alternate head portrait, I would wait and get this head portrait if you can. If you are new to this channel or a long time viewer, never got around to it, that's okay. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Periodically swing on over to the homepage and see if there's any new videos over there that you may have missed out on. We're going to have a whole bunch of stuff coming your way, so keep your peepers peeled for that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.